Robert, we were catching a bunch of slack in the comments section about how we possibly overhyped and overplayed Lushan Butte. Um, and he has not been, I would say, the most formidable opponent against Carl Froch. As I said, we bring in Robert Axel, the editor in chief of boxing.com. Uh, Robert, a bit surprised from what we saw on Saturday night? Well, a bit very surprised by what we saw on Saturday night. Uh, nobody, I mean, not you, not me, not 90% uh, of the experts, the so-called experts, I should say, uh, picked Frotch to win this. I mean, uh, except for Frotch himself and several of his countrymen, uh, everyone figured that Boutte was going to, that Will was going to dominate skill, or that skill was going to dominate Will. And uh, because uh, Frotch is... Not as skillful. He's a cruder fighter. He's not as elegant a fighter. But uh, this is one instance where Will dominated skill and did so in emphatic fashion. That's certainly one way to put it, Will dominating skill. I would also say that their game plan and their strategy, this is the Frotch camp against the Butte camp, it was outclassing and outdominating Lushan Butte on every single level in the sport of boxing. They engaged, and it seemed like Lushan Butte has never had to engage like that before, and he shies away from it. And when a barrage from Carl Froch would be thrusted upon Butte, it seemed like he was literally lost in the woods, a chicken with its head cut off, whatever analogy you want to say, I mean, or whichever way you want to describe it. The guy just didn't look prepared, and it didn't look like he was willing to engage at all in this fight. If you missed the knockout, let's get to that very, very quickly. Hand low, and then the, the loop of my hand. Up at the, I think, oh, oh, my hand. Oh. This Robert, what would you say about Carl Froch's camp's strategy going into this fight, and how would you say that they performed it so well? Well, I mean, the strategy was really to search and destroy. It was not to not to not to fight Butte's fight, which was to to be slick in the box. I mean, it was to sort of move in, smell blood, let Butte feel your power, exert your will in the beginning. I mean. It, after only a minute had passed, the ref had stopped the fight, had separated the fighters, had warned Frotch about hitting on the break, uh, playing rough on the inside. But Frotch was willing to accept that warning because he was really imposing his will. He was letting Boutte know that he was in there and that he meant business. Totally. And, of course, I mean, Frotch indeed meant business, and that's what his camp had determined, that they were going to sort of put Boutte to the test, see if he was able, willing, willing to rumble um, at that level. And again, he hasn't had to because he has those wonderful boxing skills. But once he got nailed, um, he, he was in trouble. He couldn't take Frotch's power. And uh, a good punch can, can, change, can change a fight. It can, it can change, change a life. Would you say that Lushan Butte has a glass chin? Or would you say that Carl Frotch's strategy just totally outdetermined and outplayed Lucian Butte on that night in Nottingham. Well, I wouldn't say it has a glass chin. I mean, he didn't go down. Um, the fight was stopped with him on the ropes. Uh, he didn't go down. Uh, I wouldn't say he had a glass chin. I mean, a glass chin, you hit it once, and the thing, the thing cracks like glass. Uh, he got hit a lot. I mean, Frotch was throwing everything at him but the kitchen sink, and everything but the kitchen, kitchen sink landed. Um, so, I mean, no shame on Boutte, uh, except for losing the fight, you know, and not defending himself properly or adequately. And, uh, and again, absorbing as much punishment as he did, um, again, courtesy of Carl Frotch. Would you say that also, staying with Lushan Butte, and then we'll get to Carl Farage, obviously the winner, would you say that he is one of those boxers that, you know, again with the opponents, we, we will keep going back to it since he lost his fight and wasn't even competitive in the fight. He was 30-0 going in. He's now 30-1. He lost to a man who, yes, they crowned the underdog going into this fight. Give, they gave him the underdog title. However, it was a very good opponent. It was a powerful opponent. What would you say about Lushan Butte's 30-0 record that went into this fight, now 30-1? Well, his detractors had said all along that he was a protected fighter. He had only fought in Canada and in Romania. I think he fought in the U.S. once. 
but a uh, basically protected fighter. Uh, he hadn't fought the quality opposition that Carl Frotch had fought. He wasn't involved in the Super Six. He had an opportunity to just sort of step in at the end, as you know, and sort of turned it down, mm-hmm. which in retrospect seems like perhaps a big mistake because it would have given him a lot of visibility, and, the, and uh, indeed he might have won uh, at least that fight. But Boutte... Um, Boutte's got to really sort of pick himself up. He's really got to take a look at this career and decide whether this career can be resurrected or not. I mean, he took an awful beating. And, um, and again, he was in with some live competition, uh, perhaps for the first time in his life, uh, except for Librado Andrade, and we saw what happened Saturday night. Speaking of resurrecting their careers, wouldn't you say that Carl Froch did just that Saturday night after coming off a... Not a good loss. I mean, he may have won five rounds at the most against Andre Ward in the Super 6 final. Certainly, would you say, a, uh, a huge turnaround in his career beating Lushan Butte? A gigantic turnaround in his career. Uh, Boxing.com has suddenly uh, elevated Frotch into our uh, you know pound for pound top ten. Uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't even the t- he wasn't even close to being on the list. But after that win, which was so decisive, I mean he cracked the uh, pound for pound. Uh, of best fighters fighting today. I mean, it was an amazing performance. I mean, satisfying on on every level, except for the level of it being a competitive fight, because Frotch was so dominant. A few more questions for you, Robert. Who is up next for Lushan Butte? I mean, how can he sort of uh, also turn around his career? Well, I don't even think that his team is even considering another fight at this moment. They really have to take a look at his at his performance. They have to take a look at his career, uh, both under a microscope and with a wide view lens, uh, because he has been exposed uh, for the first time in his life. He's been exposed. Uh, and whether that's exposed to somebody who has a questionable chin or whose boxing skills are only going to take him so far against middling competition remains to be seen. But, I mean, the Butte Brain Trust really has to sort of sit down and decide where does he go if indeed he goes anywhere after this. I mean, retirement is a possibility. He's a young man, but um, it looks like he's not a marquee fighter. Butte is 30 years old. I mean, when you say maybe consider retiring. I I mean, honestly, me personally, I don't see that happening. I see him trying to build back up his resume and possibly get to that prize fight once again. However, I mean, if you were to be in the Butte Brain Trust, as you said, and retirement was not an option, I mean, who would you say could possibly be next as a stepping stone to that bigger and better fight? You look at some of the people who who were not victors in the uh, in the Super Six. I mean, you look at people like Alan Green. You look at people like Arthur Abraham, perhaps and Andre Durrell, the people who did not succeed uh, in that particular tournament, but who are name fighters. Uh, again, it'll give him a chance to sort of step it up uh, after this terrible loss. Uh, give him a chance to win after this terrible loss, but he won't be he won't be filling stadiums in or arenas in Montreal with 35,000 people. I mean, he has a he has a, he has a lot that he has to do to try to get himself back into the position that he was in uh, Friday night, frankly. And for Carl Frotz, what could possibly be next? I mean, the first uh, the first thought that may come to one's head is a rematch with Andre Ward. I personally can't see it because he did not look like himself in that fight. He looked over eager and just again did not look like himself but what could possibly be next for him well i think again ward is out because i think ward is moving up and waiting he's going to fight andre dawson a fight some people are looking forward to and other people are sort of dreading but that's a fight that's coming up soon uh, all you've got to do is you one just looks at the uh, super middleweight ranks. Uh, Mikael Kessler is certainly a possibility. He just won a fight in dynamic fashion over Alan Green. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is certainly a possibility. Uh, I mean, that's a rich, a rich division. I mean, there's a lot of talent there. Um, but I, w- I would say Kessler would be a natural because, again, you have this all European uh, fighters, all, all European fight. Uh, it could be huge on, on the continent, uh, less huge here in the U.S., but huge on the continent. Even though they already fought once, you think that fight could happen once again, Frotch and Kessler? 
I think it's probably even more likely than Frotch and Ward, because uh, I think Frotch probably has a better chance against Kessler than he does against Ward. Uh, Ward, um, I know he doesn't please a lot of people the way he fights, but he is a darn good fighter. He doesn't fight to win the fight. He fights to win the round, and he pockets round after round after round. It's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's his approach to the game, and it surely has worked for him. He hasn't been, on, he hasn't been defeated in 15 years. Me personally, I would love to see Andre Ward and Chad Dawson. I know a lot of people wouldn't. They might consider it a boring match. However, if you want to see some exemplary strategical boxing, I think that'd be a fabulous fight. Um, I either agree way, with you. I mean, Robert Exel, you will be on top of it as always. I know you will. You could follow him on Twitter at boxing underscore com and check out his great writing at boxing.com. Uh, Robert Exel, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Great, Rick. Thank you.